What's going on guys? Big VP back one of the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got a 43 inch dedicated shooter Rambo Sylvester Stallone cabinet. And it's got jolts. <laughs> Damn, I'm excited to show this one off. This one, we gotta go a couple of details over this, but obviously I'm gonna start it. If you're not following me on Instagram, why are you not following me? Because if you were, you would have seen the progress of this cabinet, start to finish, artwork, jolts, testing, and all. Again, I always say it, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP. You can also message me there. I have a lot of people that like send me emails. It is much faster on Instagram, I'm very frequent, I'm very, I'm on it a lot. I always keep saying it in my video and I'm just gonna keep saying it because it's true. It is my personal Instagram. I do have the Game Case Arcades Instagram and then I have Vic VP. My Game Case Arcades one is really just for like customers just to like look at the post. My personal one is really where I post a lot of stories and you'll see a couple of family postings and all that. So I can't stress it enough. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and yes, you could shoot me a message, I do answer it. I don't have a, employee, I am a one man show. I answer all the DMs and honestly it's the fastest way. I do have an Android based phone so I have customers that want videos and photos and Instagram is the best way to send them. Enough of that. We're gonna be talking about the 43 inch dedicated shooter cabinet. I got a lot to say about this. This is going out to a customer by the name of Al. You might not remember Al. Al, if you go back maybe about two years, He's the one that bought the Michael Jordan tributed Pandora's box 32 inch cabinet. He hit me up about, I would say maybe about a month ago. I was like, hey Vic, what do you got with shooters, man? I'm really looking at like some shooting games. I want Area 51, I want Time Crisis, what can you do? And I said, well, you could do a dedicated shooter. He said, I'm all ears, shoot me some info, what do you got? I did send him the video of Time Crisis. And the first thing he noticed with Time Crisis was the jolts. The jolt light guns is a big deal. So now the big thing is that when I sent Al that Time Crisis video, he goes, Vic, I want that. That is the exact thing I want. I want the 32 inch, I want that cabinet. And I kind of hit him with a question. I said, you know what, man? You know, I do have the buy Vic. It could be a bigger screen. He goes, Vic, I'll be honest, man, as far as the space, I believe the 32 inch cabinet's gonna work for me. So again, that is a Game of Solutions cabinet. I did wanna divert from that. But I said to him, I said, you know what, man? Are you sure you, know, you don't want to buy Vic? He goes, no, Vic, I really don't have the space for it. The 32 inch will work. I really didn't wanna go with Game of Solutions on this. Um, he does have a Game of Solutions 32 inch. That's the Michael Jordan one. But this one, I, I didn't wanna get them involved. I said, you know what, dude? Um, for you, I'm gonna redesign the cabinet. You let me know if you want it. If not, it's A-OK. -okay. I basically cut the wood without a deposit. I send them pictures of it and he goes, Vic, that's gonna work, let's rock. Basically cut the side panels, right? And again, comparing it to Game Room Solutions, I did want to fix a couple of things. My biggest gripe with the Game Room Solutions cabinet is the gun holster area. That is a 90 degree area with a swivel door. The big thing like in my time crisis cabinet, I had the audio controller knob under the panel and you couldn't lift the panel with both guns in, it would block it. So like I said to Al, I said, dude, if you're down, I'm gonna redesign the cabinet. If you like how it looks, let's proceed. Basically, I remember how I did the time crisis cabinet. I always measured out the cabinet. This right here is actually a little bit deeper and obviously it is wider. The height of it is the same, but I did a different kind of design compared to Game Room Solutions because I don't want to copy them. I'm not the type to copycat it. I basically took your design and then I made it better. So just keep that in mind. So while I was doing the cabinet, I said to him, I said, dude, you know what, man? Would you be down for a 43 inch? He goes, Vic, if you're in the same price range, I'm down for it. I said, you know what, Al, you're a returning customer. I'm gonna hook it up for you. It's also my first ever cut. I'm gonna hook it up, let's do it. Let me give you a 43 inch cabinet. And he said, you know what Vic, I ain't gonna complain about a bigger screen, let's rock. So now let's go into the details of this cabinet and then I'm gonna take you down and show you what he could have 
gun. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna focus right now on the cabinet. Let's talk about the cabinet itself and then I'll show you the Buy Vic alternative to this. So now let's talk about the cabinet itself. Again, you're looking at a 43 inch dedicated shooter. As you can see, there's absolutely no joysticks. There's no arcade buttons on it besides your admin buttons. There's no Guitar Hero. There's nothing besides light guns. That is it. This is a dedicated shooter with a 43 inch 4K TV. It's a TCL TV. Majority of the games are in 1080p, but you do have a handful of games in 4K such as the House of the Dead remake. So again, you're only gonna have a 43 inch dedicated shooter. When I sent Al the video of Time Crisis, the one major thing that he like saw zoned in like tunnel vision and was like, Vic, you gotta talk to me about those light guns on that cabinet because I've never seen a light gun with the sliding recoil. And I said, dude, I know I have a ton of customers that ask me a million questions about these light guns. Yes, these come from Ray over at RPEG Electronics. These are the Jolts. They're known as Jolts. GunCon Jolts. You can talk to Ray. They are expensive. Just keep that in mind. But he was like, Vic, I do have a budget, but the number one thing I must have are these Jolts that you speak of. I must have Jolts on this build. So as you can see, this is the dedicated 43-inch shooter with two Jolt light guns. Now, again, like I said, he did hit me with, hey Vic, I do have a budget. I said, okay, I'm gonna work with this budget as best as I can. He went expensive with the light guns, but I had to actually break my own law, my own rule, and it's good. Nothing bad about it, it is good for the price. This is running a Dell Optiplex. Yes, I am breaking my own rule, but for Al, I had to get it done, and in all brutal honesty, it works. It is good, it works. This is running a Dell Optiplex. I believe it's a 7010 or a 9010. It's a little bit on the bigger side. This does have a 1650 graphics card in it. It does have 16 gigs of RAM, i5, and one terabyte SSD. Not an M.2, does have a one terabyte SSD drive in it. So yes, I'm breaking my own rule, but it works. I'm not gonna lie, it does work. Now, looking at Time Crisis, my Time Crisis cabinet that I did, yes, that also ran a Dell Optiplex, but I believe that was running at 1030, and that's where in that video I was talking about Dell Optiplex, and I wasn't a fan of it. I'll be honest, this Dell Optiplex, it's running. Again, this is running a 1650 in it, not a 1050, not a 1030, it is running a 1650. And like I said, it works. If it didn't work, I would not have sold it to Al. He did hit me with a budget. I'm not gonna be talking about the pricing on this. And somebody already messaged me on Instagram and was like, whoa, that price, I hope you're giving me everything. And I said, listen, the biggest thing that people are not understanding is the cost of the light gun alone. The jolts alone. This one right here, after Ray modded it, it's $1,700. One seven zero zero. It is a thousand dollars seven hundred. A thousand seven hundred dollars for just these light guns. Just the light guns, please. Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not bullshitting you. Let's talk about the light guns and how these specific ones came about. So, again, shout out to Ray RP Electronics. He's about 20 miles out. He's in Flushing, so you know it's about a 30 minute drive to get to him. Again, I can't knock his price. He does make amazing stuff. He is doing amazing things. You could literally give him any, any gun, a Nerf gun, you could do any gun and he will modify it. And basically you're paying for his expertise and his time. It does take a lot of time for it. Let me tell you exactly specifically what happened with these jolts here. Ray does have a price if he supplies the jolts. He does have a price, basically it's a one-time buy, he buys them, he modifies them, sends them to you. It's like he'll do everything. He cuts the middleman out. He does have a price for that. And honestly, again, I'm not gonna say it, but it's over 1600 bucks. If you get a pair, it's over 1600 bucks. What I personally specifically did for this build here is that I went and I found the, the jolts on my own. Now, do I recommend this? No, unless you're talking to Ray, and I don't know how Ray is gonna be, he knows me because we're in the business, but 
you have to talk to Ray first before you pull the trigger on Jolts. Again, me personally, I went on eBay, there's like one dude that is selling Jolts and it's just the light guns, that's, that's it. It's just the guns, not modified. There's one dude that's just selling the Jolts alone. And right now, like the ones you're looking at here, the camouflage ones on eBay for one gun, I think it's like 350 bucks. Might be less, it might be more, uh, you know, take it what it is for the date that it is. 350 bucks. This certain person I did buy this from, he did have a make an offer option and I made him an offer. He didn't take it. The first one, I went really low though, can't lie to it. Second one, third one, on eBay you could do four offers. The fourth offer, the last offer I gave him, I said, listen, I'm gonna buy two jolts, 275 per gun. And yes, it was $25 cheaper, but you know, it's $25, 50 bucks. You know what I mean? So right now you are looking at 275 and 275 for just the guns alone. You do the math on that, that's 525. So again, 525 bucks just for the guns, not modified. They, they have like a PlayStation 2 port when you get them. That's it. You have to now send this over to Ray to modify. I'm not sure coding shit. Ray, I, I PayPal Ray because it was gonna be a lot of cash. I PayPal him 900 bucks. That is just to modify my existing gun. I saved money by shipping. I mean, I went to drive it to him because I was going that way. And I picked them up, so he didn't have to ship it to me. Yes, that is what it costs for Ray to modify two light guns. Granted, he does a beautiful job. He now added like this nice coil, the USB, the power, which is already included in the jolt. The power brick is in the jolt. That's what it is. So take it for what it is, 275, 275, and 900. Vic, that's less than 1700 bucks that you just said. I'm right now lucky that I was able to make an offer on the Jolt. So I say that on purpose so that if I have another customer, oh Vic, I thought, no. You're talking about right now. I'm talking about this specific build right now. That is what it is. That is just the cost of the guns. That is just the cost of the Jolts. We are not even talking about artwork, wood, the TV, the computer. What? That's it. 900, 275, 275. Please understand that, especially when it comes to jokes. Now the big thing I do stress saying you should talk to Ray before you purchase the jolts. Ray did give me that heads up and he goes, Vic, listen, the camouflage guns. I didn't really talk about why I got camouflage, but I'll talk about that next. He said, Vic, the camouflage guns is a 50-50 chance the solenoid in this is good slash powerful or good slash not powerful. And sure enough, with this specific build, I got lucky, they are both good solenoids. Ray did give me a heads up, he said, Vic, it's a 50-50 shot. It's either gonna really pull the trigger, I have it off right now. It'll either do that, or it might kind of like slow down for rapid fire. When you're doing jolts, I don't really suggest you do the rapid fire, you're gonna be killing the solenoid in it, and according to Ray, replacing the solenoid in it, it's a headache. But yes, that's why I do say message Ray. Canada's build that's coming up, he messaged Ray and he got a pair of gray jolt light guns. I guess for his build it's gonna work out or whatever is available, I don't know. But I'm talking about these specifically, you do have to contact Ray before. I suggest it, I don't know what he's gonna do. I didn't really ask him permission to say this, but. You have to message him if you're gonna buy your own jolts. Now I stress a lot about the, pro I'm, I, I'm str I know I am. I'm stressing a lot about the jolts because the, and I don't, mi I don't mind it, please don't get this wrong, but the amount of emails and questions and then all of a sudden I hit people with prices and their eyes light up like, what the, f that's what it is. I, 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 that's the only reason why I'm, I'm acting this way. That is what it is. I'm gonna be basically saying this to future customers. That is what it is, that's it. I have somebody that said, if you remove the jolts, are we talking about a drastic change? If I do aim tracks, just the stock aim track, no recoil, no mod from Ray, you're talking 1700 bucks, two aim tracks, let's call it at 
250 bucks after tax. You're, you're literally talking $1,500 less if you get aim trucks. Now, what's pretty cool was these jolts. The specific person that sold me these jolts, they were brand new in the box. Brand new. And again, this is like a PlayStation 2 controller in reality. Yeah, it says compatible with PlayStation. Not even PlayStation 2, it just says PlayStation. It just says PlayStation compatible. It was brand new in the box. And it came like in this cool, like, kind of like ammo box. I'm gonna be giving this to the customer with this. And inside of it, it did have a foot pedal. This one is still wrapped. It did have a foot pedal. And as you can see in my promo video, I was using the foot pedal for time crisis. And there it is. Nothing fancy, it's plastic. It's got a phone cord that does connect into the actual gun con and it works. Compared to my Time Crisis one, Ray did like this drum kick pedal and it was basically a USB directly into the cabinet. It works, but there you go. There is a pedal to it and for Time Crisis, the pedal does work. Let's talk about now the artwork on this and then I'm gonna go into the kind of comparison. Uh, again, there is a reason why we did camouflage guns on this. Al basically, after about a week, after I cut the side panel, I did something, I said, hey, you know, what are you looking at as far as artwork? And he had a specific request. He said, Vic, I want Sylvester Stallone. I want a Stallone tribute dedicated cabinet. I was like, okay, this is, this is cool. Pretty unique idea. And I think I did pretty damn good. Originally, I didn't have a bunch of movie images. I didn't have a lot of images. I was thinking that he wanted just a Rambo cabinet. Cause he did ask me a game list and he did notice, he was like, Vic, this has Rambo, let's do a Rambo Sylvester Stallone cabinet. I took that as, okay, I'll put like the two or three Rambo movies and I'll put the artwork. And he goes, no Vic, I want like all the action movies of Sylvester Stallone, but absolutely forbidden, no Rocky. Yes, I know that some of you guys are like, oh, that's what he wanted. There was no Rocky on this. I believe he was aiming for like the action packed movies and not the boxing movie so that is the artwork once he mentioned to me rambo i said you could do like time crisis and we could get the camouflage jolts he goes vic do it go ahead let's do the camouflage jolts and honestly the camouflage jolt was for rambo and that's why we went with the camouflage jolt <laughs> so again i gave him a i basically gave him a, a first draft a first version of the artwork and it wasn't movie crazy it was probably like i probably did rambo one on that side and then i did like rambo two and he's like no vic i want like more movie pictures i want a lot of movie pictures and i was like are you sure he goes yes and as you can see with the kick plate he saw like the kick plate after i understood that he wants a bunch of movie pictures and he's like vic yes this is what i want yes there's a, there's a bunch of movie images here and that's what he wants. It's awesome, it worked out. I think it's also pretty cool with a nice little touch. The actual control panel, I personally love. I, I, I designed it uh, because I didn't want to put too much movie pictures. I was like, you know what, we'll keep the kick plate moving and then I'll probably have to do something with the control panel. I basically found the quote from Rambo. We got basically the nice PNG images of Rambo. When it came to the buttons, the admin buttons, I was like, I don't want to put like movie pictures because you know you got buttons here I might have a button over his cheek and I was like you know what I'm gonna wrap this glossy let me put Stallone's signature on it and I think it looks pretty sick I, I, I mean yes it might be frowned upon but his signature is available on a PNG and I took advantage of it so it looks like he signed it yes it is pretty big but I think that's pretty awesome again for Al you know, he's got that Michael Jordan cabinet. I've seen where this is going. He's got a big room and I think it's just cool. I think he could play it off as like, yeah, he signed it. I even did it inside of the actual marquee. Awesome, I, I, I think it looks great. And then again, for the marquee, same thing. I'm like, oh, you know, what are we gonna do? He's got all the movies and all that. And he basically said, Vic, just get, you know, the main four movies. You got Demolition Man, Lock Up, Rambo, and Cobra. I have personally never heard of Lockup or Cobra, and now I have after this build. And there you go, awesome. I love the cabinet. The cabinet is great, very unique. Again, it is a dedicated shooter. So if, to me, it's perfect. 
Again, I did make it a little bit deeper because me personally, when it came to the game of Sushi's cabinet, I felt like it was easy to tip. Then again, like you're not really like joystick banging on this, but I, I, I purposely made it deeper. Also, you know, for stability reasons, really, I didn't want this to tip over on someone. I made it deeper on purpose. The only thing I hate, and it's not about the cabinet itself, it's about these styles of cabinet, is freaking plexiglass. <laughs> it's been a year I've been battling with plexiglass and plexiglass is plexiglass. I have to always fight it. And plexiglass looks great, it's awesome, right? You even have the double sandwich plexiglass for the marquee. It's awesome, I, I like to chew my own horn on this. I think it looks great. It's just over, it's 72 inches because it's on casters. Obviously all my builds, they are on casters. And as you can see, me moving this around, it's not gonna tilt. It's not gonna tip over, I have nothing to worry about. It's clean, I love the control panel. Uh, you know, if GRS redesigns the cabinet and they take it, that's fine, it's a-okay and cool. Let me now explain to you this versus a buy the cabinet. The camera's overheating, so it might kind of cut out, I'm not too sure, but let's keep rocking. So, as you can see with this cabinet here, I'll be brutally honest, what's great about the design is you do see the side arm. You could definitely see it. I mean, you're talking, I believe I measured it out to be about 26 inches deep. You do see the side arm very well compared to the by Vic cabinet. Now, I literally hit out with this i said listen i could build you this cabinet for this amount or for the same exact amount i could build you a bivik with a 55 inch screen and he went with this so for the same price i could have gave i could have given him a bigger screen hypothetically so now you might be saying to yourself Vic, i don't understand for the same price you could have given him a bigger screen and a lot Yes, the big thing is this. This cabinet and the Bivik cabinet, it takes the same amount of sheets to make as far as wood-wise. When I did the artwork on it, this one does have a little bit more artwork, square footage, but my Bivik cabinet has more T-molding length. A good, I would say it's, it's a good 20 feet more of T-molding for the Bivik. The real big thing with this, is the plexiglass again like i said i i have a love-hate relationship with plexiglass but i mean you're talking about 120 to 140 bucks in plexiglass alone this piece right here is big and not to mention if i miscut it that would have been an end of that i would have lost 100 bucks and then same thing with the marquee the plexiglass the sandwich plexiglass if you really think about it a 43 inch tv versus a 55 inch it's about 120 bucks. That's how much of a difference. So like I said, he had the option between this or this. Yes, this you haven't seen yet, but it's a little sneak peek of the House of Rock. This is the dedicated shooter, guitar hero, dance dance revolution, um, karaoke, DJ hero. This, you'll stay tuned for this, but I did give out this option as well. So I said you could do the 43 inch as you see upstairs or this, the Bivik 55 inch. Now granted though, for the price of that, it's, you're not looking at the subwoofer, the Guitar Hero guitars, the 1750 watt sound system that is in this. It's basically the guts that are inside of that cabinet to this. I'm gonna take you to the side real quick because I do wanna show you the control panel on this specific Bivik cabinet. It is just, it's, it's a clean, it's, it's clean. Whereas my four player cabinet is two inches higher, so there is a kind of a, a rear gap, which I'll, I'll show it to you because it's behind you. But this right here, I just love how clean the control panel is on this. So just to show you the control panel on the Bivik four player, as you can see, there is a gap here. It's about two to three inches of a gap that is hovering over the speaker panel. Whereas the control panel for this specific unit, you can see that there is no gap. Even the artwork, it's a pretty seamless, it's, it's smooth. There's no gap here, it's, it's smooth. It looks like it's one piece. So that is the big deal. If I was gonna do a dedicated shooter cabinet, 
with the Biovic design, I might not, I really wouldn't have this legging here. I would really have the gun holsters in the cabinet here. The only reason I have this legging is for the DJ Hero deck. So as you can see, this is a very big space, but again, it's majority for the DJ controller. If I didn't have that, it was gonna be just a dedicated shooter right here. The cabinet would basically continue here along this T-molding edge, and then I would put the light guns here. There you go. So like I said, he could have had the buy Vic, but he did settle with this. Again, granted, when you do see it on the camera side by side, like I said, the side art on this, you can see more visibly than the buy Vic. The buy Vic, you kind of see the lower portion and then the TV covers the side. But again, to each their own, this is what he wanted and I sent him pictures of it and he's, he's loving every second of it. Uh, other big deal I did want to show off was that the sound system in this is the Z533. I did go bigger with the Logitech than my regular 313s, the big cabinet, I wanted to go all out. The big kind of challenge I was facing with this was where am I gonna put the volume rocker? Again, with the Game of Solutions cabinet, you're able to lift the control panel and I had the rocker there. This one here, if you remove player one's gun, I have the wheel right here. It's right on the left side here. I think it's, an, I think it's awesome, it's a perfect fit. And not to mention 120 watts. That's not even the max, I can't even go because the baby's sleeping, but it's, it's loud, it's, it's loud. So subwoofer is on this and also the speaker placement, I actually have it right here. You don't see it from there, but I do have a kind of hole grill out here and that's where the speakers are. Awesome, it's awesome stuff. Now the other big thing when I was designing this, I was asking myself, I didn't want to put like the USB, like how the cabinet I just showed you. I didn't want to put the USB out of here and the wires. You will always have wires with these, unless you do the aim tracks, Bluetooth, but they don't have recoil like the Jolt, you're gonna have wires in it. I was gonna put, you know, the USB here, but I I wasn't digging it. I wanted something where it's gotta look good. It's gotta look, again, it's a dedicated shooter. Um, you know, it is what it is here. You can always push, you know, the cable down into the cabinet if you wanna hide it. And you can just pull it out. I do have it stapled inside so you can't rip it out of the computer. And it does give, Ray does give you quite a few. I would say this is a good maybe seven feet out by you. And again, the lenses, you can't even see it, but there are the four LED lenses here. You might be able to see that one and the one up top. But all in all, gun for IR, the accuracy on it is amazing on this. And the real quick thing to show off is the custom button inserts. You can see player one. I did the coin as like an ammo kind of bullet. You got rage, you got exit, and then player two. The LEDs came on, but you can see a player two and the bullet. Again, custom button inserts also on this. All right, so real quick, let me tell you now the game count on this. I literally, I'm shooting this right now because I just sat down for about three hours and I finalized the Wii games. So I have 173 games across basically MAME Arcade, uh, the consoles like the NES, this SNES, the Genesis, Tato Type X, and Techno Parrot, and also the PC games like House of Dead Remake and all that. 173 just on that side alone, and then separately I had the Wii Gun games. I originally had 73 Wii Gun games in this list. I literally just sat down and I basically tested each game and I narrowed it down to 28 Wii games. Basically, games that do not require a nunchuck. You can see here, I'm gonna actually show you. This is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. It actually works. Uh, in arcade mode. So some of the games, again, I start out with 73. Out of those games, most of them needed a nunchuck. So for example, I had like Sniper Elite. Um, I had some other games. There was, a, there was a, like Kabbalah stuff, like the hunting games. You actually needed a nunchuck to move your character around. I just literally sat down and I launched each game and I bought it down to 28 games. I do want to show this off real quick. This is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon for the Wii. And basically, uh, when you start a game, it tells you like, hey, you need a nunchuck. And I was like, oh man, forget it. Like I would actually exit and quit. But there's actually a couple of games that have an arcade mode to it. And basically arcade mode 
it'll the computer will control your movement. So a game that was meant for you know nunchuck movement, it actually works, and this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm very amazed by this. There's another one which is Medal of Honor. Same thing. It's a game that needed. I'm gonna turn off the Joy-Con. It's a game that needed uh, the um, the nunchuck, but it did have a option for arcade mode. So this is pretty cool. I have like this computer player helping me out right now. I think I just died. I did die. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. It's, hang on. We're taking our time on this one. Basically, there's a moment where I have to hover over to the right and then we start moving when I press A. Look at that. That is so cool. Again, it is a Wii game. Look, another one here. We move. And we out. That's that's awesome. That's that's so cool. So again, I'm at 173 arcade gun games plus 28 Wii games in total. We are at 201. Now, I'll be honest. This is gonna go out to a customer, but I'm going to find a way on making a wireless nunchuck. Uh, there's a couple of bangers, a couple of great games that it, it, it's pretty cool. You know, imagine playing this game with the light gun in hand and then the nunchuck here. Granted, yes, if you have like a Sinden, you might be able to do it. I don't know. Don't comment or quote me on that. But like just doing the movement, it changes the game. Definitely your arms are going to get tired though. I mean, just playing this game alone. You know, if I'm able to hold the gun, I'm okay. But if I'm gonna hold the nunchuck and the gun, it's very interesting stuff. It's very cool stuff. There you go, that is the game count on this. All right guys, well the camera overheated. Next thing now, I do wanna do a kind of boot sequence, show you how this kind of boots up and all that. I do have the Delacoplex set to basically power on once AC power is given. Once it gets power, the computer automatically turns on. Uh, I always have a keyboard and mouse handy. I do have it on top here. You could kind of tuck it away. It's a fairly tall cabinet, so you don't really see it unless you're very far. Uh, and I also do have a PC power button up top here. Mostly used for shutdown purposes, but as far as the Dell Apple Plex, again, once you give it power, it does turn on. Um, I did a quick test where I shut down, I powered off, and then within like 15 seconds, I, I power off, meaning like I, I cut the power to the cabinet, um, and I put it back on. The Dell Apple Plex did not automatically boot up. Uh, or turn on, I should say. So I think it's like after a minute of like total power down. That's why honestly you could also use this for a power on. Let's do a whole boot sequence. Let's see how long it takes. Again, running a Dell Optiplex one terabyte SSD. So three, two, one, we power on. You can even hear the jolt kind of give a kind of trigger. I also did tuck the wires in. Now the big thing as far as the TV I used on this, I did use a TCL TV. This one does not turn on on its own. Even set to store mode, it doesn't turn on on its own. Again, it's a 43 inch screen. Basically, you get your remote, you power it on. You will hear the computer on, um, meaning like in a couple minutes, I basically have hyperspin set to turn on or start after 30 seconds of boot. So if the speaker is on, which it is, you're gonna hear like hyperspin activate and all that. So in all honesty, like right now, I'm pretty sure the PC is booted but you do have to wait for the TV to turn on. That's the only one little thing, nothing major. Um, you, gotta, you gotta put the power on. And I do have the remotes kind of um, Velcroed in the back. Also, obviously, LEDs, these are your standard RGB LED strips, whereas my Guitar Hero cabinet had addressables. We are booted, I guess I have the volume low, and I do. So again, I have my volume rocker switch here. And you're basically ready to go. You can use the arrow keys up and down. Again, I have all the gun games in one, and then it's broken down into categories. Uh, right now, I was basically, I just cut another cabinet, so I had this covered, and I was wheeling it away. You could essentially tuck the wires in into the cabinet. I do have the, the, the wires right here stapled, so you can't yank it out. It won't go out of the PC. Same thing with player two, so you can kind of see and compare, you know, fully wired out versus tucked away and in. Pretty clean. So now as far as like the control panel here, you got your four admin buttons, pretty basic stuff. You do have your up, you have your down. 
your red is escape and your green is enter. So if you go into like, let's say the gun game wheel, which has all the gun games in one, for you to actually skip the letters, you have to go left and right. So I do have that map to the player one start and coin. So if I hold player one start or coin, it's basically left or right. I could use the left or the right to go and advance to the next letter. So for example, if I go to A, I hold down the green, and now I'm in A and I could use the arrow keys to search. Basic stuff, easy stuff. If you wanna go back, you hold down the red and it'll escape out. I have that set on purpose for a hold. Same thing with the escape. It's about, I don't know, a three second hold, but I do have that set on purpose just to kind of avoid like accidental hitting and starting and all that. Um, I don't know, we'll do a... Uh, I do want to do a main arcade game first, just to kind of real quickly show off that. Um, I was playing Terminator, honestly. I was having fun with Terminator. Uh, so let's just go to Terminator real quick. So again, I could have skipped the letters, but I used the arrow keys. Long press. And again, I have that set on purpose. It's about five seconds on the long press for that. Main arcade, I have it set basically where it doesn't use the coin or the star here. I have it all set to the gun. So left button here is the coin. So you can see I'm adding coins. And then on screen trigger will start the game. That is start. If you're not pointing at the screen, it won't start. I could map the coin and the start to here, but I figure like if you're deep into the game, you know, you kind of want to stop and you got to push the button, kind of like you really would have to put money in, but it's an easy thing. And if you do want the coin mapped to the actual arcade buttons, I can do that along with the start. I just think this is like easier. And as you can see, easy. So same thing, if I wanted to bring in player two, I don't have to press the start button, point at the screen, and then I bring it up. And as you can see, we do have both jolts on and active. If it is annoying or if it's too loud, you're playing at night, there's a switch on the side that you set it to normal and you basically could still play and without the clickety clack. That's all it is. So again, I'm right now holding down the trigger for this game and it works. If I hold down the trigger, you could do that, but again, as per Ray's suggestions, you really don't want to hold down the trigger for the fire on that. So as you can see also player two, I could pull down, I could pull out the cable and as you can see it, I'm stapled in. And I'm a good, right now, I would say seven feet away. Very cool, easy. This, uh, with Terminator, uh, the right, the rear button here is your like missile. You got your shot, and you got your missile. Awesome, easy, right? Then once you're done playing, hold down the red, and it brings you back into hyperspin. Uh, as far as like videos and the logos, every game has videos and logos. Most of them do have themes, like this is a theme, it's very artsy. Games that don't have a theme, I basically have it set to full screen video. So this is one that has a theme. For example, like Time Crisis 1, this is a theme. But if I go to Time Crisis 2, I don't have a theme. But I do have a full screen video. So no logos are in the way. It's just a full screen video. Uh, you know, out of all the, out of 200 games, I would probably say a good like 90 have themes. Don't hold me to that number, but Majority of them do have themes. A lot of the main arcade ones definitely have the themes. So for example, like uh, the House of the remake, I actually got a launch box theme. And I was able to do a whole conversion thing and it works, as you can see, themed out. Awesome, cool. Now, as far as like Al shutting down and exiting, you could do a couple of things. You could, I, I mean, for me personally, I do suggest that you exit hyperspin. Um, once you go to the desktop, you just press the button up top. Or if he just doesn't remember to do that, you could essentially just, I want to bring it back. There we go. You could essentially just hit the button up top. The big thing is that when you do do this, maybe give it about a good 30 seconds for it to completely shut down. Uh, another big thing I do recommend is that you do turn off the TV and then pull the power cable. That is probably the best thing to do. So right now, you know, you gotta think of electronics. If you just cut the power while it's on, you could do something to the electronics to it. So I suggest that you power off. It's a good 30 seconds, and then you could just turn off. Boom. 
So now, if I right now flip that switch on, the PC is not gonna boot up instantly. Worst case scenario, you do have the button up top. All right, so just real quick to like end it, uh, I do wanna turn this around because I do wanna make a point about this. Somebody's gonna say something. Um, it's kind of crazy, this whole world that we are living in. Uh, supply is a little bit difficult. So some of you might be looking at the rear of the cabinet. And as you can see, you do have two different colors going on in the rear. The big thing I did want definitely when I was building this cabinet is that I wanted the size to be black. So the guy that I, the company I get the, the laminated birch from, they have either black or white. When Al placed the order, this company didn't have black birch. And it was a good two months that they did not have black birch. So, I mean, again, this is the rear of the cabinet. You don't really see it. The main thing is the front, yes, but just please keep in mind that, you know, uh, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not a machine. I'm not 100% accurate. So you can kind of see like how all this is. The big thing is that it is locked in. It ain't going nowhere. Is it the prettiest as far as the rear? No, could it be better? I mean, honestly, like if I did like 45 degree cuts here, but that's all like intricate stuff. This again is in the back. You don't really see this. Honestly though, the kind of advantage when you look at this specifically is that Al will know that basically this panel here is the only panel that you could remove. This right here, all of these is like in. You don't want to remove those because you'll mess up the cabinet. All right, well, there you guys have it. The 43 inch dedicated shooter Stallone tribute cabinet is going out to PA. Woo, Owlman, enjoy it, you're the first.